Given the state the world is in, I am quite surprised at how much I have been shooting lately, both professionally and personally, and more specifically, how quickly the Olympus XA took on the bulk of my personal work. Here is to a weekend I spent outside of London, outside of work in York, one of the oldest towns in the UK. Moments like these always intrigue me here in the UK. You always have rainfall while the sun is out. This would otherwise be a rather ordinary scene, but the combination of a sunset, the reflective floor, and the droplets on the car made me really want a picture here. I wish the birds would just turn around and look at me. Right now, they look like three random blots of white paint. Of course, by inference, based on the context, you would have figured out that these are birds. But yeah, this shot was basically me waiting for them to look over so I can shoot them on profile. But failed. York, being a city that has most of its structures date back to the medieval times, has some of the most complete walls in the UK. It was quite a view up there. When in luck, you get to see a great sunset. That was jaywalking at his best. I remember walking out of the park over the river onto the city walls, and suddenly the view became this. It became very urban, probably because this bit is closer to the train station where heavy commuting is expected. Then there are these sunset rays all over the sky. This is so hard to come by, especially in winter, so I made some pictures here. The next morning, I went on another section of the wall. It is not entirely continuous because parts of it were destroyed by the Vikings when they invaded the town. So this is another section that I went up and it showed me the outskirts of town. This looked so much like a tucked away secret garden.
this little statue, as it turns out, belongs to York Minster Stone Yard, which is where generations of stonemasons have been trained in the craft dating back all the way to the Middle Ages. One of its main missions today is to preserve the medieval cathedrals across the UK and also in continental Europe to keep cultural heritages alive and to keep them structurally safe. Found a nice mirror in a restaurant, so I took some quick snaps before I left. The next thing that I knew was that the sky was already dark. What a huge bummer, especially when on vacation. What could have been daytime till 6 is now only till 3, a whopping 30% decrease, assuming that your day starts at 9. Well, my point here is that I was going to head back to London and I really, really wanted to end the roll before that. And so this is not something I'd typically take a picture of, so to be honest, I had no idea what to expect at the time I made the picture. Well, now that you've seen the pictures, we'll move on and I'll share some of my thoughts as to what's the best application of this film, the Ultramax 400. Now, I'll first have to comment on the colour, which you might have noticed is rather vivid. If you have shot on other Kodak films, for instance, most commonly the Portra line, which is the line that's being used as a benchmark for comparison, you would notice that you do get some really saturated colours as well on that film, less so for other consumer lines like Gold 200. However, do bear in mind that this roll of film was shot under complete overcast weather. The colours in the actual scene were really very bleak for the most bit. Based on the fact that the colours rendered as is, this film do boost the saturation quite a bit of colours. And so whether or not it would work depends on what's in that frame. So for instance, for this frame of the secret garden that I saw on the walls, I think that it works superb. From the footage, we can see that it was heavily overcast. It was just a garden, so the colours, the tones, in this frame would predominantly be green. However, the film did pick up quite a bit of oranges and yellows which is why they ended up looking more pronounced than they actually are. Whereas if you compare it with this frame here, which is basically taken during sunset, and obviously that means really warm colour tones and really warm sun rays, I think it's a bit too much. I mean, there is also this really bright red car on the lower right corner. And so overall, I would say that this is a bit too saturated for my liking from what it seems. The Ultramax 400 possesses a very common trait that is shared by consumer lines. That is, it bolsters the saturation of the colours. That, in most situations, tend to make it easier for people to get nice looking pictures and therefore it's really good for snapshot type of photos. I would, however, refrain from shooting on the Ultramax 400 under any lighting conditions apart from neutral daylight or neutral indoor lighting mostly to avoid having some, well, strange colour casts on my photos. So for instance, if you look at these sunset shots, the rest of the roll are perfectly fine, save for these few shots that were all made during sunset. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe the film has an exceptional sensitivity towards magenta, but then the sky, which was supposed to be blue, was mostly magentish. That, as a result, also kind of cancelled some of the warm tones in the sunlight. So knowing that, I would prefer not to stretch its limits unless absolutely necessary. With the Ultramax 400, I sometimes worry that it doesn't give me enough dynamic range to work with. So back to this sunset example, it was obviously a rather highly contrasty lighting situation. And if you've noticed right at the beginning of this video, I've rated this roll at EI200. So I've basically overexposed it one stop on top of the box speed. This is something that I do habitually for most color films and also black and white. And for the rationale, just refer to this video here. However, it seems that with the Ultramax 400, it does struggle a little bit in retaining the clouds, the details in the highlights. I could have probably tried harder in my editing to further darken the skies, but then I also wanted to keep this sense of brightness in the sky because it was actually quite bright. Obviously, there isn't much point in comparing Ultramax with Portra because Portra is designed 
to be used as professional film and therefore it certainly should come with better dynamic range. So it certainly should be able to better handle highly contrasty lighting situations. So I tend to agree that for the price that I pay for the Ultramax, this is all right. However, if you have worked with Portra quite a bit, it's quite hard to get the comparison off your head. So as you might have read on various forums and discussion threads, the Ultramax 400 is definitely far from being the perfect or go-to all-rounded film that you could expect good results, whatever you shoot it with. Now that I've shot this full of Ultramax 400, I mean, I can't really believe that I'm saying this, but I do think that I've found the solution to this gloomy, overcast, rather underwhelming British weather. Under this type of lighting, for me personally at least, Ultramax 400 is the solution. Basically, when the sun is not out here in the UK, you get flat light that doesn't quite bring out the colours and things. So if you shoot with a film that's more true to colour, for instance, Portra, you would probably end up with frames that are rather bleak because that's what professional films are supposed to do. They're supposed to reflect the scene as is. But if you're just shooting for fun, for leisure, colour accuracy isn't that much of a big deal. So this is where, in my opinion, Ultramax 400 comes in handy. It gives you decently good results without having the need to retouch anything and to mess with the colours in editing, even if the lighting's rather unexciting, which is, unfortunately, the majority of the times here in the UK. So that's a wrap to the video, of course, but also, more importantly, to my 2021 of being on YouTube. Seriously, I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm so glad that my channel managed to find you all. And I'm so thankful for all the things that you've said in the comments for me. I mean, suggestions, encouragement, ideas. You guys are literally the inspiration. If you actually think about it, doing a video a week is rather crazy. First of all, it means that you'll have to be shooting loads every week so that you have something new to share. And obviously you'll have to keep up with the quality as well. But that's not it. More critically, it means that you'll have to be so inspired that you don't run out of things to say and that you have new thoughts to share. And I seriously could not have done all of that without you guys because you are the inspiration. So thanks so much for being with me. I wish you guys happy holidays and Merry Christmas. I shall see you in the new year. Bye!